नमस्कार माय सेल्फ इज दीपक कुमार रथ एंड आई वेलकम यू टू द डिजिटल मीडिया ऑफ उदय इंडिया एंड टुडे इन इंडिया थिंग्स आई वांट टू टेल यू दैट वन सफिया पीएम ए वुमैन एन ए मिशन इज अ रेसिडेंट ऑफ आलोपी इन केरला सी डजेंट फॉलो इस्लाम बट सी कैनॉट सीम टू गेट फ्री फ्रॉम द सैकल्स ऑफ शरियत लॉ See now demands that she be ruled a non-believer by the Supreme Court. This is the first step towards her only daughter receiving all of her assets. Sharia law only permits her to inherit half of them, with Safiya's brother receiving the other half. In the midst of uh, contentious political debate over the Uniform Civil Court. Safiya's case add to the discussion on the aspect of Muslim personal law that discriminates against women. For the unversed, let me tell you, in India, a Muslim woman is only allowed to inherit up to one third of her family's assets, according to Muslim Personal Law Sharia Application Act, 1937. If she is the only child in the family she will be entitled to 50% of the estate any leftover portion will pass to the male relative inheritance laws are fundamental to the fabric of society shaping the distribution of wealth and prosperity in many legal systems these laws reflect the values and principles of culture from which the originate sharia or islamic law governs various aspects of life for muslims including inheritance however a closer examination reveals significant disparities in how women are treated under these laws and leading to their disadvantaged position and second rate citizenship with the framework of sharia Sharia's inheritance laws are deeply rooted in the Islamic texts primarily the Quran and the hadiths sayings and actions of the prophet Muhammad these laws aim to ensure fair and just distribution of wealth among family members with specific guidelines dictating who inherits who inherits what While the principles of equality and fairness are often emphasized the practical application of these laws can often result in discriminatory outcomes for women one of the central tenets of sharia inheritance law is the principle of predefined shares which stipulates fixed portions of the deceased estate allocates to the specific relatives the quran outlines this So, uh, shares in detail assigning different portions to various family members including spouses children parents and siblings however it is distribution of these shares that highlights the disparity faced by women in sharia male relatives are typically entitled to a large share of the inheritance compared to their female counterparts for instance according to is- uh, islamic law a daughter is entitled to half of the share of the male sibling this discrepancy is based on the interpretations of quranic verses and hadiths that prioritize male hairs over female hairs while these laws may have historical and cultural justifications they perpetuate gender inequality and contribute to the marginalization of women within muslim society the disadvantaged position of women in sharia inheritance law is further exacerbated by other factors such as treatment of women as uh, dependents rather than independent individuals with property rights and in many traditional interpretations of islamic law women's financial security is often tied to their male relatives particularly their fathers husbands or sons this dependence can leave women vulnerable to exploitation and deprivation of their rightful inheritance and moreover 
द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ आउकनिंग और घरार इन इस्लामिक इनहेरिटेंस लॉ कैन ऑल्सो डिसएडवांटेज वोमेन घरार रेफर्स टू ऑन सर्टेंटिटी और एम्बिग्विटी रिगार्डिंग द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ आसेट्स अपॉन रिजल्टिंग इन डिस्पूट्स एंड लीगल कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज इन पर्टिकुलर सोसाइटीज फॉर वोमेन राइट्स आर नॉट एडिक्वेटली प्रोटेक्टेड दिस एम्बिग्विटी कैन बी एक्सप्लोटेड टू डिनाई वोमेन the rightful shares of inheritance or manipulate the distribution of assets in favor of male heirs the consequences of this discriminatory inheritance laws are profound extending beyond economic disparities to social and psychological impacts women who are deprived of their inheritance may face financial hardship limited opportunities for education and advancement and reduced agency in decision making processes furthermore the perpetuation of gender equality through inheritance laws reinforces harmful stereotypes and norms that undermine women's status and autonomy in the society efforts to reform sharia inheritance laws have been met with resistance from conservative factions within muslim communities who argue for strict adherence to traditional interpretations now the case is in the court and court has asked center and kerala government to file a reply on this but the point that i want to make is where is those feminist who have cried over reentry to sabarimala temple where are they now will they help this woman to or not will feminists give the same support to safia as they gave to the sabarimala petitioners even though the right to enter sabarimala was only ego battle and had nothing substantial for the collective woman kind fair as this case if she wins can benefit millions of muslim women in india friends in conclusion i can want to say that the inheritance laws of sharia reflect the patriarchal norms and gender biases prevalent in many muslim majority societies and women often find themselves in a disadvantaged position denied the rightful share of inheritance and relegated to second rate citizenship with the framework of sharia it is time that you ask these questions it is time that for your nation to be developed we need to strengthen our matri shakti and it is time that half of our nation's population feel safe from any kind of hardship it is time that you give a tight slap on these conservative forces and make india a progress nation that's all for today stay tuned with uday india and subscribe to uday india thank you